as you can see from that video, we have now got the hole completely dug out. Did go ahead and decide to buy this two inch foam insulation. I understand how the foam should work. And it's one of those things that the old saying is, if you don't have time to do it right the first time, how are you ever gonna have time to do it right the second time? So there's no way, obviously I'm redigging this hole. So to go ahead and spend the money now to put the foam insulation in here, if it does work, then great. This is a big experiment. And we've got another much larger greenhouse that we plan to do at some point in the future. So this will be kind of the proving ground for this. And hopefully if this all works well, then we just repeat it. Um, but I would hate to have done this whole project, not put this in and not have this system be quite as effective, especially since everybody else that puts these in does seem to put the insulation in or at least recommend putting this insulation in. And again, it makes sense. It's sort of like a thermos or a cooler that if you put something cold in it, it stays cold. Or if you put something hot in it, it stays hot. And so, you know, if we're pushing hot air down into this clay dirt all day long and we're really heating it up, we don't want that heat sort of being pulled or bleeding out into the dirt and the clay soil that's not underneath the greenhouse. So that the whole thing is basically like a giant cooler underneath the greenhouse. So that's, that's the story on the foam insulation. All right. So starting over here in the corner, this is where we're gonna have our intake. So we've got a 90 degree pipe that's gonna, or a 90 degree elbow that's gonna come up in a pipe. Now this will eventually, there will be a piece of foam behind here. We'll tie this corner together. So this will come up about to where, somewhere where the insulation, foam insulation is. I'll probably cut a notch out. I'll just move the pipe back straight into the corner. And then I'm gonna have, we're gonna have a wood frame for the end wall. So it'd be a four inch PVC pipe that will go up to the corner, over up to the ridge, and then turn and go down the ridge to pull the hot air on both ends because we've got two layers that we've got to do. So we're going to be pulling hot air out of the ridge. So it'll come down. It goes in. We have a T and then each of these pipes is two feet apart, but they're going to be one foot from the insulation and from the back wall. So there's one foot of, of clay here. And then in theory, there's a foot of clay on either side of these pipes so that these are two feet to center line all the way across here and then again you've got a foot over here it is it is perforated pipe so the idea with the perforated pipe is two things as i understand it one people have asked what about condensation well there i mean that's actually part of the system is evaporative cooling so there is going to be condensation and there's going to be evaporated moisture that's going to get in there so if it was excess amount the perforation in the pipe it will bleed the water out into the clay in the area around it and that's actually a good thing because that moisture in the clay helps to conduct heat uh, or cool so you actually don't want completely dry clay so any moisture that gets down in there goes out of these holes or evaporates out the holes, gets pushed out with air into the surrounding soil. That's a good thing. But the other thing is, is that this system, because you have a fan that's running continuously, it's a bit like the defrost on your windshield, that it's blowing air against the glass. And so if you had condensation on your windshield, eventually that air blowing across there is going to evaporate. So when the system reaches equilibrium at some point during the day where the temperature in the greenhouse and the temperature down in the ground is the same you're going to not have that and that air circulating is going to start drying out uh, well in theory drying out the water in this pipe let's walk down this way these pipes are four feet from what will be the ground level of the greenhouse to the bottom so we're getting ready to start backfilling this and then we'll fill it up to two feet or just under two feet so that the next course of pipes is two feet up. So in this case, the air is gonna come in in that corner or get pulled down in that corner. It will work its way across all of these pipes and come out this corner and stub up over here so that we'll actually have, you know, during the day, hot air pulled in, hopefully cooler air being blown out over here. And then on the two foot, on the layer that we do at two feet, we're gonna reverse that so that we've got the intake pipe over here and the exhaust uh, or the out, outflow air that's going through the system coming up in the other corner. 
So they were pulling hot air up, down, and then pushing it back up into the greenhouse um, on this side. Does that make sense? All right, so that hopefully explains this system and exactly what we are putting in. So we are not putting gravel underneath the, uh, underneath the system. I, again, have read at least in a number of places where people say not to do that, to just go ahead and put this straight into the clay and that you want these pipes surrounded in dirt or clay so that that's what's getting heated up. So we're doing this uh, based on all, everything that I've read and seen. Is it wrong? Could be. Uh, is this going to be a disaster? Might be. I hope not. Uh, I've looked at a lot of systems, but we're bringing you along. So anyways, we're going to get on. Uh, before the sun completely goes down, we're gonna start backfilling this today, and then we'll be hopefully working on it the next two days and get this brought all the way back up to ground level, and then we can start building the greenhouse. Well, good morning. We did not end up doing any backfilling last night. By the time we got everything really set in here, uh, it was just too late. We retired, so decided to hold off today. But that's a good thing, because one change they were gonna do is I had talked about right here where we come down the ramp from up there where the tractor is come down i had talked about building putting up dirt and packing it down so that we could drive over this and put dirt in and i realized well that's kind of dumb take these apart at this end leave a gap drive all the way to the other end with these pipes underneath us and start filling in at the other end and work our way back which would be a lot smarter because it'd be easier to spread that tamp it down and get it to where there's enough dirt over the pipes not to crush them. All right, time to get on the tractor. It's day three on putting in this earth battery system and we got the first layer done and back filled up to two feet called everybody out this morning because we have a wall of rain coming so cut all the pipes laid them in for the second course at two feet and again the like just with the spacing between the pipes where there's two feet between and in theory they're heating a foot uh, on each side of the pipe with them two feet apart in depth, it's the same thing. They're working the same way that way. So basically each pipe is, is heating or cooling a foot of clay all the way around the pipe. But So now it's time to start backfilling this layer and hopefully we will get all of this done and filled back in before the rain comes today. Ready? Ready. 